So today is the day we start the wiring on the utility trailer. And I think this might be one of the most anticipated videos of this project for a lot of folks because some people, they really dislike wiring, don't understand, or just struggle to, to do the wiring. So we're going to do this um, video complete wiring this trailer from front to back. Everything, how we do it, why we do it, what we use, and why, it's kind of important. Uh, I chose to use all LEDs on this trailer. I have incandescent lights I could have used, but because of the fact that I don't like to do something and have to come back and fix it later, so I chose to do LED lights because they just, they're super bright, they last forever, and they have a very, very low amperage draw compared to an incandescent traditional bulb. So what I did in anticipation for this is I uh, ordered up all this stuff from this Parts Am. So all my LED lights and these pigtails came from Parts Am. Now what I'm going to do is leave a link in the description for any, any of the materials I've used here. So if you're doing yours and you like what we've used and you know, you'd like to use it for yourself, there'll be a link there that you can click on you can find it and see if it suits you. Um, what we're doing is we're using these three-quarter LEDs. Um, some people call them penny lights, button lights, whatever. Uh, we call them thir three, quarter, uh, three quarter inch LEDs. So these particular lights, as you see, have three wires on them. One's a ground, one is for one of the uh, functions, one is for the other. Because these can be a parking light and a turn signal in the same light. They also make ones that are different color, like you can have orange and purple or orange and um, green or something like that. I didn't choose those. I chose to go with both amber colors because um, these are going to be our marker lights down the sides of the trailer. There's 10 of them down each side. Uh, these are going to be my, my stop and turn tails for the back corners of the trailer and across the back of the gate. Uh, so there are, you know, two functions there as well. These are three-quarter inch clear, and these are all going to go inside that top tube rail around so they can be loading lights at night so we can flip a switch and it will illuminate the whole entire deck inside that trailer. Then on the back, we're going to have 24 LED stop turn tail, 24 LED backup light, and the same thing on the other side. And then we got four pigtails for these lights. Um, now the backup lights usually only need two. I'm not sure why it's got three plugins there unless there's two functions. I don't think there is, but we'll see. Uh, I hope that's not a, a stop turn tail because I ordered a backup only. Well, it's not marked a stop turn tail. Well, that's not marked either. I guess we'll see when the time comes. So we've got this, and then because we have electric brakes, we're going to run an electric uh, breakaway system here. So the idea for this is there's a small 12-volt battery inside here, and if, you, if your trailer would come disconnected from your truck, this, this, can, this box uses this switch, and there's a cable. So what happens is this is supposed to be tethered to your vehicle. So if it comes loose, it will pull this cable out of the switch, which is normally open. When that pulls out, it closes the contacts in that switch, and this battery applies 12 volts to your electric brakes. So we're going to use this. I chose this because this system here, you can see it has charged, recharge, or charging indicators. And you can hit the test button before you go somewhere and know what condition it's in. That's kind of important. So that, way, that does several things. One, you know you have a full charge when, when it shows up green. And two, when you're plugging in and everything's working on your truck, you'll know because that light will light up here like an amber color telling you that it is charging. Um, so we're going to use that. And then we're going to use this pre-molded cord. Now, I choose these because they're watertight, right? So for the first however much life of the, of the, uh, the trailer... You get to use this until somebody, you know, doesn't get it plugged in all the way and drags it, and you got to replace the end. I chose this one. It's 96 inches long. It's far too long for what we need, but there is a possibility that we may have to use this with a truck with a hitch extension, so I went with a longer one. Something to be aware of on this, these come with the... Uh, wiring schematic on here and it'll tell you the position the 
the number of the conductors and what it's supposed to control. And that's fantastic, only I find a lot of times they're not in the right location here. Like these two bottoms here are for tra uh, electric trailer brakes. And then this one up here should be, I believe, our charge line. This is our marker lights. But a lot of times those colors don't coincide. This would be our right turn. This would be our left turn. The problem is when they run these connect these conductors and these colors in here, they're not always in the right position where we need here. And that isn't necessarily a big deal, except for you will see that they're different gauges of wire. Like the white traditionally in a trailer is your ground. The blue is your trailer brakes. Brown is your uh, marker lights. And yellow is your left turn. Right turn is green. Red is your charge line. Black is your backup. It's not always the case in how they're set up though, but you can see the, the heavier gauge is the black and the blue maybe, and that's what we would want. We'd want the blue to be a heavier gauge for our electric brakes as well as the ground. So we're going to use that, and I use uh, this ribbon style wire. I buy this on a roll like this because there's three conductors on it. You can get it with four conductors. Four conductors would work better for what I'm doing right now, but this is what I have, so we're gonna use it. It's a, it's a 14 gauge wire. You can buy these types of kits, but you have to be careful because a lot of times, let's see if I can find the end of this one. A lot of times what you'll find is there's a tremendous amount of insulation, but not much copper wire in there and you go to strip it or you solder it and whatever and then it breaks real easy. This one happens to be pretty good. This is a 14 gauge kit as well. So this will work just fine if we need more. I use this for the trailer brakes themselves. This is an insulated dual conductor wire. This is a 12 gauge. We don't need 12 gauge. Uh, you would use 12 gauge wire, one, if you had three axles. Um, we only have tandem and also if you had a really long trailer with your you had a long distance for that electricity to travel You would upsize to a 12 we could do away with that We could use 14 gauge and mostly because you're dealing with 14 gauge here on your breakaway as well So you're only as good as your weakest link if this is 14 gauge Typically you could have got away with this especially on this trailer being this short um, again the gauge of your wire can dictate can affect, I should say, affect the amount of amperage and voltage drop that you get to where it's going. So think of, uh, think of having a great big huge wire like this and just run a little bit of electricity through it. You're never going to drop any, any voltage or lose any power no matter how long you, you ran this if you only needed like say two or three amps. But then if you, if you were running say 50 amps through this, it couldn't handle it, it would melt down. The big thing about wiring is you have to have enough of the conductors in there that can let enough electricity flow without the resistance of the wire itself affecting the end result. So it's kind of like that garden hose thing that, you know, if you had a, a garden hose turned on full blast, but somewhere along the line, you know, you know your your garden hose was crimped down it was restricted somewhere and you're not getting as much water out of it that's the same theory on electricity um, if wire and resistance is basically a restriction so we've got all that now we do all of our connections everything is going to be uh, soldered so we like to use a real fine solder we'll use a soldering iron this is a uh, Milwaukee M12. My buddy Rick suggested this, and I, I just love this. This thing's fantastic. We'll solder that every joint, and then we're going to use this. This is Penetrox. It's a lot commonly referred to as Deox. What it is is it, it's an anti-oxidizing compound that you put on a connection, and it's used in between dissimilar uh, conductors a lot, but you can use it on, on copper as kind of a... a a help to try and keep the corrosion from happening. We'll also be using heat shrink. So uh, again, we'll have a link to this too. These are kits that I buy. These have the adhesive in them and they're, you can see the fine adjustments in diameter in this kit, which makes a big deal sometimes. This is a three to one. So whatever diameter it is here, it will shrink down to one third of its diameter. So that works well. Uh, don't discount your your electrical tape. I use Scotch, uh, you know, 33 plus from 3M. It's it's the 
best stuff I can I can find. It's a good quality tape. Uh, it's the difference between putting tape on and it sticks, or putting tape on, you come back a day or two later and it's unraveling. I'll use a razor blade for a lot of my strip when I'm doing the stripping, and I'll show you why I need that. Good set of electrical strippers, um, nice and sharp set of side cuts. Um, lots of uh, loom. We're going to be using tons and tons of wire loom to protect the wire as well. As far as the wire choice, um, you know, you can get your wire online, any additional wire I need. But what I tend to do is because I take apart so many medium duty trucks that are, you know, 35 feet long, I keep that wiring that comes with it. And a lot of times I use that to wire it because I don't think you can beat the quality of. OE manufacturers wiring harnesses for sure. So I'll probably be utilizing a lot of that in this trailer. So let's get started. We're going to mount these boxes and our switches, and then I'll bring you back and we'll start on uh, the connections. We have the breakaway box mounted, as is the junction box. I like to use a nylock nut anywhere I can when plastic's involved. The nylock uses a nylon inserted in the nut. To keep it from backing off a lock washer has to have tension to do that this doesn't so it helps keep from blowing out the plastic and cracking it got to be very careful i'd like to use stainless but i forgot to get them so for right now we're putting in regular bolts so we can continue on now we need to do the loom so when i'm putting loom on wire i take my tape make a few wraps and then wherever the wrap stops take the split part of the loom Put it over top of that and then tape it. Find the split, run up the tape. I run the loom just a little bit past where my tape line is. Give it a couple wraps. And this is where a lot of times people just kind of pull the tape and, you know, kind of stretch it. But I find that it doesn't stick as well then as it does if I cut it. So once I'm happy with that, where it's at, and I'll run it through here. But I want to make sure I had the loom on it before it goes through this hole. Now i got to fish it through this hole. I made that hole tight because I didn't want the loom to in there slopping around. Because when the loom moves in a hole, it rubs. If it stays still, it's not rubbing through. Alright, so we're tagging on this three conductor wire right now and all I'm doing here is I'm taping over this to help it to not get stuck as it comes through I don't want it I don't want this to be tight as far as like stiff because this needs to bend but I want this to be protected right here so that it'll go around these tight bends without catching on the fish tape okay so we're going to feed this up through and we're adding a string every time we pull a wire. So we always have something where if this gets stuck, we gotta pull it back, and this one would come loose, the other one's still here, plus we have another one to pull some, the next wires through. So, I'm gonna go to the other end, or you? Yeah, I'll go to the other end. You can just feed that. Okay. Is this stuck all ready? So we've taken it loose, came up the upright on that side and across now. So now we have to take that back on. We got this pulled through, so now we need to mark it. So we're going to put one band of electrical tape on this one because we're going to run another one of them all the way from the back to the front. This takes care of the stop, turn, tail, and the backup, but we still have the inside lights to do. We need a ground. And we need uh, winch control back here and trailer brakes. We got a lot to go, so we'll mark this back here with just a single band of tape. Then the next one we'll put two bands on. 
so we know what it is. Getting ready to pull the next one through, so we need to pull the string we just put in, but then make sure we put another one in. So we can guide that in. I'll pull it. I think I need two hands for this. So we got all the wires ran and down this whole side and the front and everything. So he's starting to put some lights in now. Got a lot of solder to do. Yeah, that's for sure. You try to record this three times and keep getting interrupted. So every splice is going to be done just like this, all these wires. You would think if you had to solder all this, you'd probably cut back the number of lights you decided to put on there. But no, not you. Oh yeah, it was clearly me. Admitting you have a problem. First part to recovery, first step. My problem is I can't see what I'm doing. It's so dark. Well, do you want a light? Nah, then I couldn't complain about being dark. Mm, yeah. This is such a great soldering iron. I'm wondering if the, the light's the problem. There's something else wrong here. Like what? Like I can't see. <laughs> Do you want a light? No. <laughs> Gosh. Come on. There we go. All right. Take a little deox. Shrink up on the wires. Milwaukee makes a heat gun for this, an M12 heat gun. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Because you're always looking for lighters and yeah. stuff. So then I'm gonna let that cool. Now this this heat shrink is a three to one, um, and it has the adhesive in it. That's why it's like sticking to my fingers. So it pushes the adhesive out and seals around each wire. <clears throat> Since I have this, you know, conglomeration here, they have to shove back in this way. This one has to come over here. We'll loom it, and it's got to come in the bottom of here. So we can run all these because we're going to have uh, each one of these is a stop turn tail. So we have to be gentle with how I push these in here so I don't scrape them. And then just shove these back. I probably ought to shorten these wires up. But there's a technique <clears throat> that you can use of twisting the wires, which will help hold it into place, which is what we're doing here. I really like these grommets on these ones because they're very flexible. Okay, now you see that straight up. I want that straight up. Yay, the first one. <laughs> no, <laughs> second one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I guess I forgot about that. Yeah, but that's okay. I can't even see it. So it'll go in here. Oh. Okay. Nice and sweet light. So, rinse and repeat, man. A million times. Yeah, so what I'd like to do is, um, I'm 
I'm using this strand wire because it's just convenient, you know. Um, so I'm using the green on this side as ground because left turn is yellow and tail lights is brown. So I'm going to use these. This is tail lights. This is left turn. This is ground up to here. And then it changes, and then this will be, green will be the right turn, yellow will be our ground, and brown will be our tail for that side. So I'm going to try and make it to where this light, because I have an odd number of lights here, which I really don't like. <laughs> um, this one is going to have to be a turn signal for both sides, but I have to get a diode to make that happen. And I didn't find any in my box, so I'm probably going to have to go order some. That's unfortunate. So, anyways, all I'm gonna do is just strip them all back. It would be better to, uh, if you had four wires coming in, bring two in this way and two off this way. But this is the only one that we had uh, another one because the wire comes up into here for that license plate light. Otherwise, it's just three wires on each one. And when you use the LED lights, it's important you pay attention to which one is the ground because these particular lights are polarity sensitive. So I just move it to a battery. Over here, the black is the ground, white is the marker, red is the brake. So we think. So it seems. So then I'm just choosing which um, each drink we need based on the diameter. So it looks like I'm going to be using mostly this for a while. And I can get three splices out of this. Especially if there's only three wires going in. Just don't make the mistake I have many times. Forget to put heat shrink on. This is harder on a battery to do it this way. But I like to solder each one by one. I'll put a little solder on the tip. Once the green light stops flashing, then you're ready to go. There it is. So now it's not, see how it's melting? It's melting the solder now. Just put a little bit of pressure there. for a second or two and we take our deox. I like to put the deox on while it's still warm because then it kind of flows out on it. it fills a lot of crevices this way. This is our turn. Red's our turn. Heat shrink.
I don't uh, solder these all at the same time because it seems like I have more trouble with the wires staying together then. This compound kind of helps stop or limit corrosion in a joint, so if your heat shrink would fail, a little bit more protection than you may have had without it. So, in October is the Dying Breed Diesel reunion, it's called, in uh, Columbiana, Ohio, and we're going. Hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> okay. I would like to take the red and white K100 Kenworth. Oh, wow, that's a big order. Yeah, so I have about less than a month to get it over here um, go through it figure out all I need to do to it and get it so it's tall order mm-hmm <clears throat> yeah I'm not sure if that'll happen I would like for it to if we can is that the thing we went to last year yes okay they have that they have uh, that guy that smokes the, uh, what's that? I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's Grandpa Smoking, that's what it's called. Yeah. Barbecue. A food truck. Yeah. Barbecue truck. It, I don't know if that's the same guy that was there last time or not. I think so, but it was good. But it was good, if it was. Mm -hmm. So, it's an all-day affair. It's, uh, it's trucks and people and great people to talk to and lots of trucks to look at. And then uh, in the evening, they do a truck parade kind of deal where um, everyone that leaves out that's there, and they kind of do a little parade deal. It's pretty cool. So I'm hoping I can get that Kenworth going. Or the 9670 International Cab over be okay. Whichever. But I think the Kenworth is probably close. Okay, so when you have these, you know, two wires going each way, it's a little bit of a pickle to get them in without skinning them, so you got to be gentle. Go one way, and go the other way, and the other way. That way we have plenty of wire if we ever have to make a change or solder. Plus you're making it so the wire's not moving in there. Straight up and down. Yay. Okay, three done. I am now at the center light. It's the one in the middle of the gate. Now this particular light is going to require something just a little bit different. This is the marker light turned on right now. Um, what I want is because I have an odd number of lights across here, this middle one, I don't want it to where the marker lights are, or the flashers are on. Say you got your four ways on. I want this one to flash as a four-way, and I also want it to flash as a left turn, also as a right turn, independently. So that's going to require something a little bit, a little bit more. It's not difficult. It's just simple. So the problem being is if I make it to where it turns on with the right-hand turn signal and the left-hand turn signal, if I just connected all this together and just soldered it all just like so, all three together then what would happen is you turn the left side turn signal on it's going to turn on all the turn signals on this side and depending on what vehicle it is it could backfeed in the vehicle and do the same thing on it and turn on the other side's turn signals as well 
So we have to find a way to stop the electricity from going where we don't want it. Now we're going to achieve that by using what's called a diode. A diode is nothing more than a check valve, one-way check valve for electric. So in our case, if we put a diode here and a diode here, what that enables us to do is to basically isolate. If we wanted the left turn to come on, then it would come on. If we wanted the right turn to come on, it would come on but not the both. So the diode would go in line here and it's directional. It can let electricity flow one way, but not the other. So when we put a diode here, we turn one turn signal on, it'll come up here, but because we have a diode over here that only lets electricity come this way and not back, it will stop it. And the same thing over here. So regardless of which side we turn on, it's only gonna turn on this light for the side that's activated. And the reason I'm doing this is because we have an odd number of lights. Had I thought about this a little more, I probably would have put my lights in here in the middle and I could have added maybe one more or something to take care of it. But I wanted the lights at these posts because I thought that would be the, the best place. So um, I don't want these lights to where if your four ways are on, this one like by not connecting this to the turn signals, this one would not be flashing. It would, it would look like it's burnt out because all the four of them would not be flashing. It would just be these three and those three. So I, I have ordered a couple diodes and the way you order diodes is first you, you enter in the equation what your system voltage is, which ours is 12 volts. So we have a 12 volt light and then you take the ampacity. Ampacity is the amount of electricity that this thing requires to run. So you figure out the ampacity and the voltage, it gives you the watts. And then you can order your, your diode based on the watts. And th these things pull like, it's such a small nominal amount of, of power, it's not funny, um, in, in compared to an incandescent tr traditional bulb. A con traditional incandescent bulb uses a wire element inside it that literally has to short out and heat up and glow red to create light. So they're very inefficient for electric because you're, you're producing heat, which is basically a short circuit across the resistor. <clears throat> so the whole thing about LEDs are they are light emitting diodes. That's what they are. They don't require resistance to heat up. They actually take the electrons that come into the LED and basically rearrange them to create light. And it's a very simple process that requires very little amounts of, of current to, to actually work and work well. So I've got these on order. We're going to wait for them to come in and we'll finish that one up. Meanwhile, we're going to continue. Now I have test light on here. So every time I go and hook up the next one, I know it's working. And it's very important when I'm soldering to take the time to make sure that there's no damages to the wires and where we've pulled them and that we're routing them correctly and sticking them in there where they're not going to be a problem. Because this is an awful lot of connections and I've got probably a full day today and probably another full day by the time I get all these lights on. We ordered 94 lights for this trailer. She's gonna be bright. Super trucker engaged. All right, they are all done except the center. So now I'm gonna start working on this corner here, which is a backup light here, stop, turn, tail. I got a corner here, it's a turn signal too. I didn't get the video much of this. I was on a phone call, but we're complete over to here now. All these are wired in, and this is a winch control. I have wiring come back here so that we can control the winch from back here in the event that the remote gets lost, doesn't work, whatever. We're gonna have a wired plug-in remote up front, a wireless remote, and then we'll have this back here. So this will be in, this will be out, or whichever. But I wanted this, this is a lift gate control, so it's weather tight and it's kind of protected so hopefully it should do okay and since we already have a bolt hole here I cleaned up the inside and put a ring terminal and a serrated washer which is what these are so that I could add another ground to the circuit so everywhere I have the opportunity to add a ground I'll clean the metal up drill a hole put a serrated washer and add a ground to the circuit because it's never any fun when you have all this all this wiring and you know you're trying to chase down a bad ground or a bad connection. So I like to add several anywhere I can. 
it's just uh, good insurance I think so uh, that being said I'm gonna get this set up and show you what it is so here I need to do a particular splice and I've got this is the grounds my black is the ground coming in these two are grounds and this green we're using as a ground ground in the gate so I don't want to cut this wire if I don't have to because then I have to bring another one in so what I'll do is come in here right about the place I think I need to go and take the strippers and I'll just make a cut there and we'll just peel this insulation off of here off of that wire and then peel it out of there then what we can do is it allows us to put our heat shrink on here and we feed our heat shrink through I need a bigger size heat shrink I need to get let me get the bigger size All right. bigger sized heat shrink because they're gonna have three in and three out so then allows us to do something like this we can take this ground feed it through the heat shrink as a pass-through and we're able to use that as our constant we'll take this this is the one we're using as the ground going here we can twist it in like so and then we can add these two in as well without cutting without cutting our wire let me strip that some more this on here our thicker copper one will go on first then we have these two thin tin they're what's called tin uh, tin copper I think that's what those are and we can put these over like this we end up with two in three out and a nice tight solder A little solder on the gun on the tip of the iron and then it lets it suck through that wire pretty easy okay after that give it a second to cool because if we move it too certain too soon you'll break the solder okay. this is the deox And I want the entire copper wires, the entire exposed part of the wire covered. The slider, heat shrink over top of all of them, getting it centered. Notice how I got the wires kind of in a, a triangle right here. Because that's how I want them to be when they're when it's cooled. Get these as tight as you can. So you close up that little gap right there. We don't want the wires pulling our heat shrink apart. We want it, the heat shrink to make the wires tight. I like to use deox because even though this has adhesive in it. You can't seal up these wires a hundred percent. I need to buy the heat gun from Milwaukee to do this kind of stuff. So that takes care of our corner turn signal light here and our 24 LED 
turn signal up here, one that goes up high. So then what's left is the backup light. So the backup light is gonna go, this is gonna be our backup signal from the front, and again, this will be our ground right here. So all we have to do is just strip this one out, and it's just a one-to-one, -one, so we don't have a lot going on there. Um, I probably could have just put the ground into here, but I've also, um, I want to tie this ground in, in my box. So that's why I wanted to pass through, because this ground is going forward, this ground is giving us something to work off of. So we'll come off of this splice again for our backup and tie this in, and then we'll continue this one on to the top. With that one's done. Now we're not gonna be using the white one, so I will take the white one. Put a little piece of cut the wire off. I'm not using it, so we put heat shrink over it, and then we're going to seal that end off. Uh oh. Well, that sucks. It's the last lighter I got. Got lucky. This I usually get these. They're left in trucks that I buy. Come on now. There we go. See the adhesive come out of the end. Okay. Now we just have this one left. And this is the backup. And it's just one on one, so we can use this, this real small stuff here. Take our bolt, jump it to the back, and we'll put in a serrated washer so that that ground can bite in there. Even though I've already cleaned it up, it doesn't mean it'll stay clean. We put that in next. Then our ring terminal goes on top of that. Flat washer. And a nylock nut. Tighten it up. most flexible rubber grommets I've ever used for sure. Okay, it's got some scratches on it. Okay, now I'll go test everything. The unfortunate thing about these lights is on the amber lights, uh, the white is your marker, red is a turn signal, and black is your ground. On the single clear lights, uh, the white is the, the ground and the black is the positive. So, yeah, and they are they are polarity sensitive, so that's kind of a bummer right there. Wish these were turned the other way or if this was done differently. 
um, because it gets confusing when you have you know three of the the wires coming in here which the black is the the ground here and then you come to the inside run on the opposite side of it and you're going to start soldering and now your white is the ground that could be something that could be improved but anyways we're moving along testing my lights all my little lights are working that's about half of them in now because that's one side up to just about the middle and I've got the feed dropped down so now before I can go any farther I need to I'm gonna start at the back and work my way up like I did the other side but it's coming along they're all done all of our inside load lights are wired and they work we tested all these before we put them in so we didn't get any duds after I soldered them in not too bad went through a whole roll of solder on the second one now yeah that'll do all the outside ones are done I just have to put this one back in I needed that one to run some now we're gonna test all these again we tested each one individually um, we just need to test the turn signals and what have you while it's, since they're already in okay we're gonna test all the lights to make sure that they work how they're supposed to what are you starting with I'm gonna start with the marker lights okay and that's all the Everything all the, on the lights outside, on the outside outside should be lit and it's a dim function, function. Okay. okay your two in the front are working right my two in the very front are on okay yep they're all on all right now we're going to do the um driver's side turn signal this is for the side only okay yep and the rear brake lights and turn signal should not be working right okay now the other side should be up the side only yeah they're all working but not the rear right okay so now that same side you're on should be the back Yes. And it should go all the way across the gate till right to the center pole. Mm-hmm. It does. And it should be working. Yep. As turn signals. Mm-hmm. Now the other end, but the coming up the side of the trailer is not working. Correct. Nothing on the side of the trailer. Right. Okay. Now the other side. It should be working as a turn signal. Yeah. All the way up to the middle. Yep, it the is. The middle bulb should be working too. It is. And the side of the trailer should not be working. Right, it's not. Okay. So the importance of that is when we turn on, let me get the backup lights here. Um, these are backups here. Oops, wrong two. Yep, they're working. Both of them? Yes. All right, so the significance of these not working when those are working, because I have these set up as just turn signals, the rear is set up to be a turn signal and a brake light. So I didn't want to apply the brakes with no turn signal on and the side of the trailer, both of the sides light up. I wanted this to only work as a turn signal. That's why when we hit this as being our brake light, it won't illuminate up either side. So both of our backups work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we just need to test the inside load lights. Yep, let me go around and look at the other side. Deal. Yeah, nice. Good deal. Yeah, that'll do. So now all I have to do is solder in the uh, diodes. I have them just temporary in, temporary in. You see this picture, this diode? You can see the arrow and kind of a wall. 
It lets the electricity follow, flow from what's called the anode side to the cathode side, I think it's called. So the electricity can only go one way but not the other. And that's how we're making that light work on both turn signals but not actually turning on anything past here. All right, I think we're good. I'm gonna light everything up and get one walk around make sure everything's lit well. Yeah, that looks like everything. Everything should be loaded up 100% now. Okay, I think we're good to go. I'm not sure if I'm gonna solder those in or if I'm gonna make little receiver um, connectors to go in it with heat shrink. That'll do. So that part's done. Now I just have to terminate up here, finish this up. So these are all the wires that come from up here, and they come around this, and this has likely got some jagged edges up here. So we're going to put it inside this hydraulic suction line. I've been careful to make sure there's no, no metal sticking out of here. So we're going to run this up here and put all of these in here. I was going to run independent wire looms, but I think it's better if I just shove them all in one and then I'll just clamp it down here at the bottom. Pull each individual one, get all the slack out, shove that way up in there. This is just about the same diameter which I took in the plasma cutter. I think you cut all that out to make it big and open. I think we're clear at the top. Yeah, it'll work. That'll protect all our wires now. Now we can start running them where they belong and terminate them. Okay, that'll work. I'm terminating the cord that comes from the truck, the seven pin cord. I've got it in here and it's got a little rubber bushing and I put a zip tie on either side so it can't pull in and out. Now we'll also have a clamp around this somewhere up in here, whether it's on the on one of the bolts of the jack or if I drill a hole through here, I'm not sure, but we'll have another one anyways. But I'm using heat shrink crimp connectors here inside this, this box. And I like to start with its position like this. So you see there's just one, one inlet here. So what I've done is bring the heavy cord in here. My breakaway stuff comes in the bottom because there's just a few small wires. And then I left it to where I have two large uh, access ports here. So I'll bring in the trailer brakes. And what I like to do is take the heaviest wires of the cord and get them way over here get them out of the way and then the trailer brakes can come in like this because these will have to terminate with the trailer brakes as well and the ground so I like to keep it all together as close as we can and then we'll bring in each one of these ribbon wires from the left side and the right side and they'll get terminated but I'm using these uh, crimp heat shrink connectors I was going to solder them in but I didn't have the right ones I had this kit so this is what I've been using and uh, I'll leave a, a link in description for all the stuff that we're using. So if you decided something you need and you want to use what we did, you can find it easy. Go ahead and hook up the breakaway. So again, the breakaway has a battery inside here. And the per sole purpose is if the trailer comes disconnected from your tow vehicle, 
this little switch here has a cable on it. This cable is tethered to your tow vehicle. If you come disconnect it as they pull apart, it pulls this part completely out of here. This switch is what's called normally open, meaning there's no, there's no continuity in here. It's normally open. Once this is pulled out, it closes that switch. So what you have here is a, ba is a battery inside this box that has to be maintained. So there's a charge line and a ground line that come up to the battery. So the white is the ground, which we'll be hooking to our ground terminal right here. And then the black for the battery charge is going to go to the red, which is going to be our charge line coming from our, tra our truck into the trailer. And then we have this blue, which goes to the switch. So the way this is going to work is the battery voltage comes out on this blue wire. We're going to hook it to this switch. Now it comes up underneath here over to our switch on this blue wire right here, and it just sits there. And if you never have a situation where this is pulled out, nothing ever happens. But when that does pull out, it closes the contact because that's just a wedge basically between two contacts like this. And when you pull that wedge out, they make contact. So then if they would make contact, it sends power back through on the black wire, which is this, this one right here, and it's tied into our electric brake terminal. That electric brake terminal is the one that goes all the way back to the rear axle so it would apply the brakes but we're going to go ahead and solder this connection together get all these shortened and put them on the terminals that they need to go on and i'll bring you back once all that is done so the two blues are soldered together the black for the switch is going to our trailer brakes our battery line for our ground is going here and our battery positive is going here so that's all done now we're ready to bring in the rest of the wires. I gotta be conscientious because there's like 12 wires coming in here. So it's gonna get really, really tight in here. So it's very important to be, be very neat with your work. The next step for most people would be to hook up your tail lights and your turn signals, your you know, marker lights and turn signals, which brown is marker, yellow is your left turn and, right, and green is your right turn. So, you know, obviously you'd bring them in, land them, brown to the brown terminal, green to the green, yellow to the yellow. And that would correspond since we're changing the, the end out on the cord so they'd be correct. And then you bring your trailer brake wiring in. This is what actually goes to your axles themselves. You bring them in, you strip that back, and inside this is a black and white conductor. So we would run the white to the ground and trailer brakes don't care. They're, they're a magnet. They don't care about polarity. I just run white to the white and black to the blue coming in from the from the cord here from the truck and that would be our trailer brakes so that would be what a normal person does for trailer brake wiring but if you can see you can tell we got quite a bit more hanging out back here so if you just wanted to see how you did the basics of it well that's about it and if you want to see all the extras I'm doing and how I'm making it so that this side is a turn signal but does not come on as a brake light um, you know stick around I got a few things going on and how we're gonna have backup lights up there and we're gonna have lights up here so that these load lights and the backup lights can come on at the same time or not at the same time put the truck in reverse the backup lights come on but if you want to turn the load lights on it'll turn on the load lights and the backup lights so if you want to see that kind of stuff stick around